Too many people these days give away their power to achieve and progress in life because of a simple lack of confidence in themselves. They second-guess themselves, feel unworthy, and never take action to get what they want in life. And in so doing, they end up leading an average life, a life likely to be plagued by mediocrity. Confidence is the degree to which you can trust yourself. We tend to confuse confidence for skill. We see someone who's a great speaker, a serial entrepreneur, a daring athlete, and think I wish I could be like them. Able to show up and just do it. What we don't see is the hundreds of times they tried and it didn't work out. That's how they built their skills, by having the confidence to show up again. Confidence is not knowing that you will win at whatever game you choose to play, it's the certainty that you can take a punch. That, when things won't go the way you want them to, you will keep showing up and take another one on the chin. And again, because that's the best way to learn and get that level of skill where things work out great most of the time. Confidence is not about results, it's about the effort. Do you trust yourself to keep showing up? Or will you give up and stop doing it? That's why my hack to build confidence is to get used to doing things I don't want to be doing. For example, I used to hate cold water, so I took a cold shower every day. I wasn't a great runner, so I ran a marathon after four weeks of training. I didn't feel confident speaking in public, so I joined a speaking group. I now feel confident in all the above, and more. And that's how I built my confidence. By showing myself that I can trust myself. No matter the result, I'm going to show up. Without a doubt, confidence is a critical personal power. With it, almost all things are possible. Without it, well, life will inevitably be a struggle. But, this doesn't have to be the case. Not for you, or anyone, not anymore. Especially if you put these life hacks for building confidence to use right away. 1. Reprogram yourself. I know, the initial thought of reprogramming yourself sounds a bit out there. But you know what, that's what you have to do. There are two messages you can believe in this world. The messages that the outside world would have you believe, or the messages that you would have yourself believe. You see, confidence, in essence, is a deep and unshakable belief in yourself. And when you finally convince yourself that you can accomplish a thing, or deserve a thing, you exponentially increase your odds of obtaining that which you desire. And the best way to do this is to program your internal script with affirmations. In short, you have to force yourself to, well, believe in yourself and believe you are deserving of what you want for your life. Affirmations, used daily with sincerity and conviction will make a significant difference almost immediately in how confident you are. 2. Embrace your flaws. Not doubting yourself doesn't mean that you're flawless. In fact, admitting and embracing your flaws is a step towards overcoming your self-doubt. A confident person is able to accept their flaws and make steps towards changing for the better. On the other hand, someone who struggles with self-doubt may be too hard on themselves or avoid thinking about their flaws entirely. It may be painful, but sitting down to properly address your flaws and mistakes will help you become a better person. It's not easy to balance self-criticism and accepting your flaws, but it's definitely an important process to go through. 3. Talk to yourself. This might seem crazy, but it works. Talking to yourself can make you smarter, improve your memory, help you focus and even increase athletic performance. The documentary The Human Brain claims we say between 300 to 1,000 words to ourselves per minute. The Navy SEALs and Special Forces use the power of positive self-talk as a way of getting through tough time. For example, by instructing recruits to be mentally tough and speak positively to themselves, they can learn how to override fears resulting from the limbic brain system, a primal part of the brain that helps us deal with anxiety. How to make it work for you be positive, because the way you talk to yourself influences your neurobiological response to it. When you say, I know what to do here or see things as a challenge rather than a problem, you've turned your response into a positive one. 4. Quiet your mind. One of the best ways to quiet your mind is mediation. What's meditation? Well, it is the practice of quieting your mind and disciplining your attention. And if you do it correctly, it can silence the hyperactive thoughts that keep you anxious and less confident. Now, meditation isn't the only way to do this. You can also take long walks in nature, on the beach, around the block, it doesn't really matter where. So long as you just give yourself a few minutes to focus on nothing but your thoughts. So, give yourself a moment or two to settle your mind. Meditate or go for a walk, and you'll be surprised with how much better it will help you feel about your day and yourself. 5. Face your fears. When we feel in control, we're not afraid. When we have a level of comfort with something, it's not scary. When we don't feel in control, we don't think clearly because our emotional brain is in the driver's seat and takes over. This is why fear often seems random and irrational. Our emotions are in control. To increase safety, FBI agents are taught to move closer to the threat. It does no good to avoid, deny or ignore the fear. How to make it work for you. Harvard Medical School professor Ronald Siegel recommends this in his book, The Mindfulness Solution. 
Think about your worst fear. Spend time with it. Now make your fear worse by getting closer to it. Imagine the worst that could happen. Now focus on your breathing. Feel your body relax. See, you didn't die, did you? You're on your way to conquering your fear. If you don't believe in yourself, how do you expect anybody else to? Start today. 6. Take calculated risks. Another thing that can skyrocket your confidence almost instantaneously is when you step outside of your comfort zone. We spend so much of our lives living within a very confined sphere, work, home, friends, family. In that familiar environment, all of our self-criticisms and problems seem bigger and more difficult to solve. But we forget how invigorating it can be to get a different perspective, to challenge ourselves, to take a risk. I'm not talking about doing something physically dangerous. There are many social risks that are just as scary to tackle. Single. Grow a pair and finally approach that girl you've been meaning to talk to. Ask a woman out. Ask your boss for a raise. Wear a piece of clothing that you think is too bold for you. Try a new haircut. Take a class and learn a new skill. Attend a conference or plan a trip to a place where you don't know anyone else. So many of these things seem like risks before you do them. But then, if you actually work up the courage to take the leap, suddenly a weight is lifted off of your shoulders. I was afraid to do this. The best thing is, even if you don't reach your intended goal, even if you fail, you still feel better about yourself because you had the cojones to put yourself out there. After a while, you begin to crave that sensation of staring down your fears and charging right into them. And your confidence builds because you feel that positive momentum in your life. 7. Study confidence. Too many people falsely believe that confidence is something you are born with. But, this isn't the case. People, over time, learn how to become confident due to a mixture of accidental and intentional learning experiences. The accidental learning experiences come from wins a person may have had in their lives over time that taught them they were capable and able to do a thing well. As such, they gain confidence in their abilities from their personal experiences which oftentimes cascade wonderfully into all other areas of their lives. Then there are intentional learning experiences. Many people have understood that they had shortcomings in a particular area but decided to learn how to overcome such shortcomings through study. They learn not through their own experiences, but rather, through other people's experiences. And the best known way to learn from other people's experiences is through study. Like reading books on confidence, watching video, or learning from a helpful confidence article like the one you are reading now. 8. Limit social media. You knew I'd say this, right? The worst thing you can do to damage your confidence is to compare yourself or your life with other people's. Research studies show that social media can mess with your self-esteem. With social media, impossible standards are set by people who curate their lives and show only the most enviable moment. These picture-perfect images become the cause of distress for many others beating down on their confidence levels. The comparisons people make on these platforms are often seen as leaving users insecure as if they aren't able to keep up with others. The FOMO, fear of missing out. It is perfectly okay to measure progress in life, but when done through comparisons with engineered photos, it is a big problem. There are feelings of jealousy and a desperate need for validation. For those with body image issues, one hour on social media equals misery. Teens compare themselves with peers who seem to have it all. Entrepreneurs see their confidence plummet when they see their competition flourishing while they're still struggling. Then there are the likes and comments. Self-doubt sneaks in when a post does not get the expected feedback. What others think becomes more important than your own. How can one build self-confidence by scrolling social media? There's a real world out there. Why not explore it?